My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. I wanna talk about how to build wealth with dividend growth investing. Here in 2023, at the age of 37, I am no longer working a nine to five job. For better or for worse, here in January this year, I was laid off from my, my career. I've been working in the same career for the last 10 years. I was in software sales. I was leading teams of dozens of people. And one day to the next, that was all gone. It was kind of a forced early retirement. But it has been a really great experience this year, not having to work a nine to five job. One of the things that I miss, though, about working with, with people was, you know, learning about, you know, other people's goals and ambitions around finance and money. You know, I have a YouTube channel where I talk about investing. I never really told people at work that I had a YouTube channel. I always like to keep it private. I, I'm kind of a private person. But I really enjoyed talking to people in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, talking about their goals and why they invested and what, what was important to them. And in today's video, I wanna kind of relive that experience of what it was like talking to different people about how to retire early, how to build wealth with dividend growth investing. Because now I don't really talk to you know a whole lot of people. I don't work and you know interact with dozens and dozens of people. I interact with a two year old and that's about it. But anyways, my hope for this video is that it's just a casual conversation between you and I and that you can learn something new. I've never really been good at holding a conversation and you know, since the pandemic, I'm a little bit socially awkward, so our conversation might look a little like this. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Is it still hot out there? Did you catch a game last night? Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. What grade are you in at school? Have you decided what dessert you're gonna have? Do you like hot fudge sundaes? I'd be glad to carve you that. Thinner slices are more tender though. Would that be all right? You can always come back up for more. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about five things, kind of five steps. If you're looking to create wealth with dividend growth investing, let's sit down, let's have a chat, you know, grab your, your spice latte, grab your hot chocolate, whatever it is, your Celsius. Oh, that was one of my favorite things while working is drinking my kiwi, kiwi guava Celsius. I have one of those like twice a day. But anyways, so... The first thing that I want to talk about is, you know, the first step when you think about how to create wealth with dividend investing, the very first thing that you have to start with is you have to understand your why. I talked a little bit about this in my last video last week, you know, how important it is to understand your why, but that's really where it starts because if you don't have a goal or a destination of where you're going, it makes it very difficult because then you're kind of all over the place, right? And so the very first thing is you gotta know why you're investing because that ties in to your investment time horizon. If you don't know your investing time horizon, before you invest a single dollar, you really need to understand, well, why are you investing? And if you plan to one day live off of your dividend portfolio like I'm doing today, you really have to understand, are you looking to do this in 10 or 20 years or you know, just a couple of years? Because that's really gonna dictate what kind of investments that you're gonna have in your portfolio, and it's not super complicated. Um, but you, the way that I always look at this is your investments, they're just vehicles. And if you don't know where, you're, where your destination is, it's gonna be very difficult to pick the right vehicle that's gonna help you get there. The next thing that you really have to understand, I can't sugarcoat this, it takes money to make money. I'm sorry, if you wanna get dividends, you have to invest money. Money doesn't grow on trees, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Um, so you really have to understand that if you wanna generate income, you have to have money to do that. So if you're like the majority of us and you have to work for a living, you really have to focus on things that you can control, and that is focusing on increasing your savings rate so that you can invest more into your portfolio. If you're not doing that, you're not really going to move the needle. Nothing's really going to change. So it's important to understand that it takes money to make money, and the few things that you can do that are in your control, you can make sure that you have a, an eye on your expenses, you make sure that you're staying out of consumer debt, and you're looking for new ways to make more money. Maybe you're working, you have the option to work overtime. Maybe once a, once a week you work a couple hours extra and you put that difference into your portfolio, right? Maybe you can gamify it so that it's it's fun for you. You can work an extra shift or, or do something on the weekends, okay? Um, the next thing here when it comes to making more money and it takes money to make money is you wanna make sure that you're optimizing your accounts, right? You have to understand that, you know, your tax advantage accounts, your HSAs, your Roth IRAs, you want to make sure that you understand where your money's going and why it's going where. 
okay? And so understanding the order of operation of how you invest, very, very important. And then the next thing is obviously there's no free lunch, unfortunately. Taxes are a thing, so you wanna make sure that you're optimizing your taxes and you're, you're keeping more money at the end of the day and you're not just giving it away in taxes. The third thing here when it comes to creating wealth with dividend investing is that you really wanna find your discipline the approach that you're gonna take when it comes to building out your portfolio. So for me, the investment approach that I take is I use the core and satellite approach to investing where the core, my core portfolio is made up of you know, low fee index funds and then I build upon my core um, which are called satellite positions, and these are smaller positions. And what I really like to do is from, you know, this is, I got this from inspiration from JL Collins. I talk a lot about this on the channel, is I really recommend to everyone the simple path to wealth with dividend investing, where you focus on SHD and DGRO as your core, and then your satellite positions can represent, you know, either high growth, depending on your time horizon, you know, referencing back to step number one, knowing your time horizon, or higher yielding ETFs or stocks because you plan on living off the dividend sooner, right? So that's really what it comes down to. These are the levers that you have to pull from. And so the thing that I love the most about the Simple Path to Wealth with dividend investing using the core and satellite approach is it really provides flexibility and it's not complicated. And just your average Joe, your average, I mean, honestly guys, if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. I am I was never the smartest guy in the room. I, I'm very well educated, I've done a lot in my life, but I was never the smartest person and I never claimed to be the smartest person. And if I can do it, I don't, I'm not meaning to put myself down, but damn, if I can do it, you can do it, I promise you, okay? So though that's the thing here. So that's step number three is finding your discipline, finding an approach that you can stick with. Really quick, what I struggled with, I was investing since I was about 21 years old. I didn't get my act together until I was about 30 years old. It took me a decade. If I would have had my discipline when I was in my early 20s, it, I could have retired years and years earlier. It would have been so much easier, I promise you. So that's really, really important that you understand your discipline and your approach to investing and your methodology, right? And that's kind of, you know how every company has their mission statement, right? What is your mission statement for your, your investing approach? And if you don't have one, I know this sounds a little cheesy, right? If you don't have one, create one because it makes things a lot easier, especially when things are tough and when the market is red and you start questioning everything, every life choice that you've made. So that's why it's so, so important. So the fourth step here that I wanna talk about is trusting in the process. Now, I wanna share a true personal story. So I was a sales leader for about seven years. I led dozens and dozens of people um, here in the US and globally. And in a sales role, if you've ever worked in a sales role, you're gonna get a ton of no's before you get a yes. I mean, that's just part of sales, right? And something, you know, the teams that I would lead, they were generally junior or newer sales reps. I, I led teams like sales development teams, business development teams. They were generally, you know, heavily you know, on the phone, email, prospecting, and there was a lot of effort that went into that. And you generally wouldn't see the results right away. And you know, in this age of instant gratification that can be very difficult, especially for these Gen Yers and Gen Zers, I'm an old millennial, so it's okay. But I understand, you know, the instant gratification, we want it now, now, now. But you have to understand that, you know, you have to trust in the process for every no that you're gonna get. A lot of it is the mindset that you're just one step closer to that yes. And so how does this apply to dividend investing? Well, what you have to understand is this is the slow path to wealth. If you want to 10x your money overnight, go buy crypto, go buy some Doge or whatever that is, right? Like you could do that. That's cool. That's fine. But if you want to be a dividend investor, a dividend growth investor, you have to understand that this is a process. You're not going to get rich overnight unless you win the lottery, unless something miraculous happens in your life, you're fed with a silver spoon. For the rest of us, this takes time. It took my wife and I almost a decade, which reasonably considering, you know, how some other people takes much longer, I would consider that pretty fast, but you have to understand that this is not something that you're going to get rich on overnight, 
Okay, so trusting in the process and something that helped me, you know, was to visualize this whole process. How do I visualize this process of trying to create wealth with dividend growth investing? And the way that you do that is by using a dividend reinvestment calculator to project conservative future returns. So to do this, what we're gonna use is a dividend reinvestment calculator. This is a calculator that I created. There's others out there, but you wanna be mindful that you're looking at, you're using one that distinguishes between capital appreciation and dividend growth because they're separate. And as a dividend investor, you really wanna single out the dividend itself so that you can see the dividend growth and not just the overall appreciation. So that's why I created one myself. I will leave this a link to this spreadsheet in the pinned comment below. There's no paywall. You don't have to pay to use it it's completely free i've used other you know other things here um, that i've shared in other videos you can use it for free there's no paywall it's my gift to you all right anyway so what we're looking at i'm not going to go through each of the uh, the individual descriptions each here at the bottom there's a description of how to use it um, but what i'm looking for is if you were to invest into shd and dgro if they were to make up 50% DGRO, 50% SHD, if that were to make up your portfolio, these are the numbers that you're gonna get. I just ran these here this, this month here in November. Um, this is this would be, these would be the numbers that you would insert into the uh, fields above in yellow. So this is if your portfolio is 50% SHD, 50% DGRO. Um, this is just obviously an example. Not everybody's gonna have that, but that's how you would you know essentially use this. And depending on how much you initially have invested and what you're investing on an annual basis. So let's say, for example, you're investing $1,000 a month as an example. And if you're not investing $1,000 a month, it's okay, but you wanna make sure, what was step number two? It takes money to make money. If you're not getting at least $1,000 a month, this is really what you wanna focus on. $500, that's great. See if you can get $600, $700. It, it you know, I know inflation is real, I buy eggs too, but see how you can make more money because it takes money to make money. And so this, what we're seeing here is if you were to reinvest the dividends um, and you were to add $1,000 a month, this is, would be your projected returns here. Let me zoom out so you can see this a little bit better. Um, there we go. So if you were to invest 50% into SHD, 50% into DGRO, this is the reasonable assumption of what your portfolio would look like over time. Now, a few disclaimers here. This is using historical data. As always, we, you know, historical data is never a guarantee of future returns. Okay. So if you wanted to be more conservative. So this was the number from now. I used the four-year average dividend yield, the five-year dividend CAGR. If you wanted to get more conservative, because I there's a, the reason why I'm saying this, there's always some smarty pants in the comments that always says, well, Jake, you're using historical data and historical data. Dude, calm down. Take take a second, breathe. Um, I understand. <laughs> I've, been, I've been on YouTube for over four years. There's always that one dude in the comments. Anyways, um, if you wanna make this more conservative, that's cool, that's fine. What you could do is you could decrease this if you wanted to project even more conservative returns. You could lower the dividend growth, you could lower the capital appreciation, you can do that, that's fine. But just understand, you know, these ETFs, they're, they're market cap weighted, that's, you know, these are pretty reasonable assumptions. It's not totally crazy, okay? But anyways, so this would be the uh, the projected return. Now, for example, let me pull this over here and show you what this would potentially look like. If, say, for example, let's say you were a, you know, rock star and let's say you were saving 2000 or investing $2,000 a month. Now, I know, I know this is not, you know, reasonable for everyone, I, I understand, but not everyone, is in the same situation. So let's say, for example, you invested two thousand dollars a month. Well, you look at that. Your your returns after ten years. This is just the dividends. If you know you were to do this for ten years, you'd have just about seventeen thousand in annual dividends. And after twenty years, you'd be getting over a hundred thousand in dividend income, right? And then after thirty years, this this hurts my brain. I as a peasant, I can't even you know conceptualize what that actually means to have that much money, but you'd have over $650,000 in annual dividend income. All things remaining the same, 
all the disclaimers with, I don't know if this is going to continue, but this is what the projected future returns would look like. And this is how you do that. And so when I talk about trusting in the process, this is one of the things that got me so, so excited is to visualize it. When you visualize this, it gets you really motivated. At least it did with me. One of my favorite things that I, one of my favorite moments in trying to pursue financial independence was, you know, a couple of years in, I created this, this, uh, this spreadsheet and I ran the numbers and I showed my wife, I was like, hey, come take a look at this. And she's like, wait, is that real? I was like, well, I mean, all things remaining constant. I, I don't know. I mean, plus or minus. And I just saw her jaw drop because we didn't come from money. I mean, looking at these numbers, I mean, these are not inflation adjusted, but this is not money that I grew up with. This is money that I can't, it's hard for me to really visualize what my life would look like with that kind of money. So that's why I put on this list, trust in the process. The last step here on how to create wealth with dividend growth investing is to automate and chill. I know that sounds simple, but that's really the really the essence of it, is automate your investing, set it up so that it comes out of your paycheck on a regular basis and that you're investing on a regular cadence. That was so, so important. Just set it up and forget it and just enjoy the other areas of your life. If you really like watching football, go and watch football while your portfolio is automated in the background and enjoy the other areas of your life and don't obsess <laughs> like I did every single night opening up my app, watching my portfolio just like, like yeah, anyways, um, that's really what I can say there is automate and chill um, because, you know, when you think about this, especially for those of you that are looking to reach fire, financial independence will retire early off of your dividend portfolio. You have to understand that, like I mentioned earlier, this is the slow path to wealth where, you know, in the very beginning, you're kind of in that honeymoon phase where you're really, really excited, where you're like, okay, I'm down this new path and it's really, really exciting. But then towards the middle, you've been doing it for a couple of years, it's just kind of the same old, same old. And then, you know, a couple of years before you finally reach it, it's like biting your fingernails, like you're so excited because you're so close. Unless you get laid off and you get forced into early retirement earlier. I mean, that could always happen. I had, to, I didn't have that in my, on my bingo card for 2023, but that happened. And I wanna show you this. I thought this was so interesting. You know, in different parts of the world, as we get older, we generally get happier. And you look at the happiness curve, we're really, really happy up until about our mid 20s. And then life happens and responsibilities and bills and, you know, grocery bills skyrocket because of once in a century uh, pandemics. But that's, uh, yeah. But you see that in your working years, things are generally, you're not as happy, you're in the grind. And then once you get out of that, it starts rounding up and starts going up in the later years of your life. Now imagine if you were to pull this little happiness curve, if you were to pull this forward up into your 40s, your late 30s, and that's what my wife and I are doing, and I'm so, so excited about what this will look like. Now, these the numbers here, what you're seeing here is different by country, and you can see here, this is from 2014. Even if uh, the one that I found here, even in 2017, um, you can see the older you get, it's kind of the same trend. The older you get, the happier you are. Really, my goal has been, you know, by creating wealth with dividend growth investing, it empowers us to really manipulate this curve so that it happens much earlier in life so that we can enjoy our golden years much earlier. The last thing that I wanna say here when it comes to creating wealth with dividend growth investing is understanding that this really is the slow path to wealth. You're not gonna get rich overnight with this. And you know, if you're pursuing FIRE, financial independence, and you wanna retire early, you have to understand that you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad days. And when the days, when, when you have a tough day, and trust me, there will be very hard days, just refer back to step number one. Refer back to your why. Why are you doing this? And if you understand and you have your why, really it makes it so much easier when those hard days come. If you're trying to achieve financial independence and retire early, you have to understand that there's no one size fits all. 
In fact, there are many different stages of fire. Um, like for example, my wife and I were in barista fire where we're living off of our portfolio, but we're still working on the side, right? To fill that gap in the income that we need. If you're concerned about you know, pursuing fire and you think that there's a one size fits all, there really isn't. If you really wanna learn about the different stages of financial independence and retire early, I'll have a video pop up in a second and you can watch that video next. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see y'all in next week's video. Please subscribe. 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 Please subscribe. 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 You know what? I think we're going to be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. <laughs>